Welcome back everyone, I'm Mr. Bosmo, and this is the second video in a series of four videos meant to help you improve your observational skills when drawing. In video number one, we covered the basics of observation and symbolism in drawing. In this second video, we will practice making comparisons, using visual measuring devices, getting your brain out of the way, and other strategies to make observations go more smoothly. This will include blind drawing, using grids, drawing upside down, positive and negative space, and other methods. Before we start, a warm-up session of blind drawing. Blind drawing means that you look at an object, image, visualization, or other source, but you do not look at your drawing hand and paper. The purpose is to strengthen the bond between the visual measurements you make with your eyes, how your brain interprets those measurements, and how you then inform your hand to move in an effort to mimic what you saw. Blind drawings often end up crazy, loose, unrealistic, overlapped, out of proportion, etc. Sometimes you will have amazing results and will want to shade, color, or paint a finished blind drawing. Other times, right to the trash. The purpose of practice drawing activities is just that, practice. The purpose is not finished artwork. We are just trying to increase the size of your brain muscles. You will have one minute for each of the following blind drawings. I'm going to have you stick with the exact same symbols that we used from video number one for the sake of consistency. Remember, don't look at your hand or your paper. Try to focus your eyes only on the lines you see on the screen make observations, and then translate those observations to your hand. It doesn't matter how these end up looking, it's all about you establishing a better connection between your brain and your hand. Drawing number one, one minute. Draw a fish. Drawing number two, create a blind drawing of a boat. Drawing number three, create a blind drawing of a car. Drawing number four, create a blind drawing of a tree.
In drawing number five, create a blind drawing of a person. Now that we're warmed up, we'll begin by learning how to practice making better comparisons. How big is one thing compared to another? How long? How short? What angle? How much curve? What direction? All of these are important questions you must ask yourself while drawing through observation. Fortunately, the more you practice, the less you will have to think about these things. They become automatic. It's a lot like a golf swing. Beginners have too many things to think about and will often drop their shoulder or lift their head. They are so focused on the other fundamentals of the swing that at least one component falls apart. Drawing can be a lot like that. You focus on drawing a beautiful nose, eyes, and mouth, but make them way too small for the head they're on. You draw a super detailed tractor in a field, but accidentally make the tractor larger than the barn that it is nearby. You draw all the parts of a person correctly, but you forget to pay attention to proportions and end up with arms and legs that are the same length. You get the idea. So in this lesson, we'll try to focus our attention on just that one concept, making comparisons. I'm going to put five different images up on the screen. Each of them will be made up of simple shapes with little detail. However, you will need to compare the sizes and locations of those shapes to see that you place them in the correct position and make them the correct size. You will have two minutes to work on each of the five drawings. After each drawing, you might consider pausing and checking your work to see how close you were when it comes to sizes, shapes, distances, and other comparisons. This first drawing will be made up of nothing but lines.
The second drawing will be made of nothing but squares. Two minutes. Drawing number three, nothing but circles. You have two minutes. This fourth drawing will contain lines, squares, and circles. You have two minutes.
Your last practice drawing will be the image of a face. In an observational situation like the one you were just in, technically you could use rulers, compasses, and other measuring devices to figure out the exact size and shape of each line and then draw based on your measurements. However, in the real world, drawing through observation from life, this is not an option. Artists tend to build an instinctive ability to visually measure things over time. Strong observers can easily identify a halfway point. They can see how the edge of one shape lines up with the edge of another. They can assume how many of one object would fit into another object. Without practice and training, this doesn't come naturally to everyone. One workaround is using a pencil or your fingers as a measuring device by extending your arm straight out in front of you, holding up that pencil, holding a mark with your finger, and then comparing that measurement to another part of the 3D thing you are observing. Let me show you what I mean. Pause the video and give it a try yourself. You don't need to draw anything, just try measuring some things with the method I've demonstrated above. Okay, so notice how I am holding my arm straight out in front of me and I'm using the end of the eraser to mark the top left edge of the fridge. And then I'm using my thumb here to mark where that right edge is. So now I know how wide that fridge is if my arm is extended. Uh, then I can turn that and I see I've got one width to there to that skinny piece of tape, a second width down to there to the end of the fatter piece of tape, and then a little bit extra down here at the bottom. So when I would go to draw that refrigerator, I know that I have to make its height a little bit more than twice its width. So I can do that with a, you know, a pencil. I could also do it with, uh, you know, just using my hands. There's one width with two widths, right? So as long as you keep that arm extended, because if you're moving it in and out, that's gonna change the, the measurement. So you do have to keep that arm completely straight out in front of you and extended in order for this to work. And the idea would be that eventually you would just kind of internalize this method 
and not need to use the pencil or your hand. Another way to improve your ability to observe, compare, and see with accuracy is to take the subject matter out of the picture by turning your image and drawing both upside down. This only works well when drawing from a 2D image, not when working from life, but it is a great tool. Take the next five minutes and attempt to draw the upside down image as accurately as possible. All you should focus on is drawing one line at a time, making comparisons, and only making marks where you actually see marks, not where you want the marks to be. Pause the video if you want to work on the drawing longer. Once you are done, advance the video to see a right side up version of the image and compare your right side up drawing to it. Since you focused all of your mental energy on observing accurately rather than on drawing a specific object and trying to force it to look like how your brain thinks it should, you most likely ended up with a pretty accurate drawing. Some artists work upside down all of the time.
Our last exercise for today will be using a simple grid to increase accuracy. Artists have been using grids in various forms for hundreds of years or more. A grid helps us to break an image or scene down into smaller parts that are more manageable for our brain. The grid gives us intersections and lines to assist in the process of making comparisons, nailing down proportions, and drawing objects that our brain does not want to see as they really are. The other great thing a grid can do for you is help you to really see the positive and negative shapes. We often get hung up on the positive shapes. These are the actual objects in an image. We forget that the spaces around objects also form shapes between the edges of the positive shape and the edges of our drawing paper. Being aware of the negative shapes can sometimes make drawing realistically easier. Some grid boxes may have a fairly complex positive shape that has textures, lines, shading, etc., while the negative shape is just black. You can focus on drawing the negative shape only. If done correctly, you will end up with an outline of your positive shape that looks correct. Yes, you will still need to add those details inside of the positive shape, but you will have made yourself an accurate boundary. Get yourself a piece of regular 8.5 by 11 inch printer paper, fold it in half both ways, turn the paper horizontally, and take 5 minutes to use the grid boxes on your paper to emulate what you see in the four grid boxes on the screen.
Compare your finished drawing to the original and look for observation and recording errors. Make changes as needed. The more accurate you want a gridded drawing to be, the more boxes you put into the grid. An 8x8 eight eight grid on this same piece of printer paper would have made things much easier than just having a 4x4 four four grid. Just remember, whatever grid you make on top of your source image, the grid on your drawing paper must have the same number of boxes and the same proportions. For example, I could have a printout with four one-inch boxes on it and a drawing paper with four two-by-two-inch boxes on it. This would result in a drawing that was twice the size of the original but would retain all of the proportions. Some artists also create see-through grids to set up in front of landscapes, portraits, still lifes, and so on. Clear plexiglass with a grid drawn on it and set up in front of the artist can work. I've also seen people build a wooden frame and then stretch strings across it in both directions to make a freestanding grid for outdoor use. To apply these ideas to a project of your own, you could print out a favorite image and then grid it and your drawing paper. You could turn that same printed image upside down and draw using the grid but with both images upside down. You could go outside and do blind contour drawings of flowers and trees. You could print out an image of a car and use rulers to make extremely precise measurements that would then be translated to your drawing paper. Just keep on drawing and thinking about how you can really see what is in front of you rather than seeing what your brain wants you to see. In video 3, we're going to focus on visualization, seeing images in your mind and memory. How can you use observational drawing skills to improve your ability to draw accurately from your memory and imagination? Until then, thank you all for coming and have fun drawing.